On the workbench tonight we have this rather strange looking setup. We have the innards of an old amplified computer speaker system. This uses the TA8229K chip. We have on the front power LED, volume control, tone control. The on-off switch that used to be there, I bypassed that. Uh, some more modifications. I replaced the input filter capacitor. This is the original capacitor. This is a 2200 microfarad capacitor. And this actually turned out to be bad. The equivalent series resistance was fine, but the capacitance was only 1700 microfarad. So that was definitely out of tolerance. Replaced it with a 3300 microfarad capacitor. I also modified the inputs and outputs. I put on these RCA jacks so that I can connect a CD player to this. And I connected these crappy TV speakers. These are only 4 ohms, 5 watts. They really don't sound very good. I have them lying on this towel because if they are straight on the table, they're going to rattle and it's all going to sound even worse. The transformer, the original one, used to be a Walwart power brick type of thing. I replaced that with this transformer that puts out 12 volts. As we turn up the volume, you can hear it does make music and at very low volumes it actually sounds quite decent. But only at a decent listening volume, it already starts to distort. I wanted to investigate this distortion a little bit because I really think that those TV speakers are capable of doing more than just that. So I hooked up the scope to the input filter capacitor. This is AC coupled, so we're only seeing any fluctuations in the input DC voltage. We don't see the voltage itself. And with the volume turned all the way down, as you can see, aside from some noise, this is pretty much a flat line. And this should be a flat line no matter what. Even at high volumes, it should be just a flat line. But let's turn up the volume. That is pretty bad. I now have one of the speakers disconnected and replaced with a 4 ohm load resistor. And hooked up in parallel to that is the oscilloscope, now monitoring the output signal. And as you can see, we can get pretty nice distortion even on a 1 kHz sine wave. If we just turn it up high enough. And you can hear the distortion on the other speaker that is still hooked up. So if I adjust this so that the signal is not distorted, we're getting 3.44 volts RMS. To get the RMS output power, we enter this into the pocket calculator. 3.44 volts divided by 4 ohms. That is no more than 860 milliwatts. I wonder what a lower frequency is going to look like. So let's switch this over to only 100 hertz. And if we readjust our scope, as you can see, we already have some pretty nice distortion right there. So let's turn down the volume, make that go away. Something like that, I'd say. Uh, no, yeah, that's looking pretty good right there. So we now have 3.44 volts RMS. You remember that value? That's what we just had before. So 
although we had to turn down our volume quite a bit, it seems like our output power remains fairly constant even if we change the frequency. I took out the 3300 microfarad capacitor and I replaced it with this absolutely enormous 13,000 microfarad capacitor. And we're now back to the initial setup. So I can play some music for you. And as you can clearly hear, once I turn the volume up, We're now getting a lot more volume without any distortion in the signal. Note, I got the same input sensitivity of one volt set on the scope. Flat line if there is no signal. If I turn it up... There is noticeable distortion, but it is not nearly as bad as it was. The amplifier with the big filter capacitor is now hooked back up to the load resistor. The oscilloscope is monitoring the speaker output. We're feeding a 1 kHz sine wave into the amplifier, and we're doing that just like we did before on only the right channel that is hooked up to the load resistor. The channel that has the speaker still connected is open. However, as we turn the volume up, you can clearly hear the signal coming out of that speaker. So this IC really is quite a crappy one. It's got a lot of crosstalk between the channels. Let's measure the output power once again. I'm going to bring up the output volume slowly until the distortion. Then turn it back. That's too much. That seems to be about ideal. What is our RMS output voltage? 3.44 volts, remember? So, what do we learn from this video? By installing a higher capacity filter capacitor in your power supply, you can raise the impulse output power of your amplifier, but you cannot raise the RMS, continuous output power, of that amplifier.